Hi. Sorry I'm late. I already called Lori. Well, actually, I thought I'd be seeing you right after your meeting with Lester this morning. Well, I needed to get away, clear my head, so I went back to the clinic. Oh, I see. Well, should I wait until our lunch with Lori? Maybe I should talk it out beforehand. It isn't good news, is it? <laughs> The old homestead. Mm. I wish I had a chance to clean up before you came home. Don't well, worry, buddy. Here, start with that if you're so Oh, concerned. yeah, thanks. Look, be careful over there. Hey, I'm all right, huh? Just need to sit down. That's right. That's exactly what you're going to do, because uh. I am going to fix us a great lunch. Ooh, it smells musty in here. Yeah, it does kind of have that unlived-in smell. But I'm going to take care of that. And this still is your home. <laughs> Not very humble, but... I guess there's no place like it. Yeah, it looks like uh, we really do need some cleaning. My father's. I had to put that into a criminal museum. The last cigar of Vince Cardello. <laughs> well... There are other memories here. True. And they're going to be even better ones. You just wait and see. Because you're starting a brand new life. What did Lester say? Everything I expected him to say and do. He fired you? Not exactly. He said there is the possibility that I can work in internal medicine. I don't remember any positions being open there. There aren't. Oh, I see. In other words, if there's something comes up... Yeah, I'll, yeah, Lester will be the first to tell me. See, he didn't demand my resignation, though, only to stay out of the OR and to confine my practice to the clinic until something opens up here. I don't blame you for being mad. Oh, see, I'm, I'm really not mad at Lester. I'm mad at myself. But why? You hurt your hand defending Lori. No, you had no choice. No, I don't mean that. It's... Terry, ever since I started therapy, I don't know, I, I thought the system with a capital S would somehow wrap its arms around me and, and understand. Lori and I are to do that. Yeah, but you and Lori can't give me a job. Oh, no, wait a minute. From what you're saying, I understand you're not too thrilled with the idea of working full-time at the clinic. No, not anymore. I don't understand. I don't know. Maybe I don't myself. You see, Terry, a year ago, I lived. I lived for that clinic. And now the thought of spending 40 hours plus in that clinic, I, it just simply does not thrill me anymore. I know Dave's going to appreciate you being there. Yes, I know that, and he deserves a break, and I am the coordinator over there. Let me tell you something. When I walk into the main lobby of this hospital and I, I see the paneling and I hear all the hello, Dr. Martins, and I walk past the nice rooms and go to my own office, I feel important. Feel important? You are important. But Terry, when I work at that clinic with the endless parade of hard luck stories, I say, wait a minute, wait. Is, is this really what I want? I see. It was easier when you had it both ways. Exactly. And you see, the older doctors, they kept telling me my idealism wouldn't last forever. Ben, your idealism never would have gotten Chesterfield Clinic off the ground. After all you went through to start that, that was God's work, and now he's just calling you to a greater commitment there, that's all. You refuse me the right to feel sorry for myself, don't you? I haven't got it. Dave hasn't got it. 
Why should you? <laughs> Fair enough. Actually, I don't know that there's a reason for Dave to feel self-pity anymore. Why is that? Dave and Kate are seeing each other again. You know something? He looks real proud there. I guess maybe he was back then. Well, you have other things to be proud of now. No, I hadn't noticed. Yeah, sure. You know some of the things that most people are so hungry for, like money and power, they don't mean that much to you anymore. Yeah, and I hate learning what everybody else already accepts. So I'm sorry, I know. I'm gonna stop talking about it too, but I can't help thinking about it. You gotta understand, Marianne, I always wanted to be on top of something, anything at all. It's always like uh, going through a desert looking for an oasis. You finally got there. All you found was a mirage. But you know that now. Yes, I know it, Big deals. So what else? What else can I do? Wait. For what? No, it's not for what, it's for whom. God is going to give you a new outlook on life. Yeah, well, uh, don't worry, because he already has. No, I'm not talking about that. Oh, no, I mean he's going to give you a faith in him that will save you from the hell you saw. Look, how do I know that the next goal I choose isn't going to turn out just like the last one? Because that was your goal. Now this one is his. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't feel it. Well, that's all the more reason to wait and to believe it. Tell you what, I will talk to you about it over lunch, okay? Come in. Hard to break an old habit. Hey, Pete. <laughs> hey, I see you haven't replaced me yet, huh? I haven't got the money to replace it, Peter Davidson yet. Well, have a seat. Thank you. I can't stay long. I just want to see how you're doing. Well, pretty good. Here, take a look. We just got our uh, insurance payment. Are you in the black? No, not quite. Uh, the insurance payments are going to be spread out over about a six-month period. So we're about a million bucks in the hole with the uh, lost contracts and legal hassles and things like that. So, But if they start paying money for lost sleep, it'll hey, be Hey, about... now look. Things are looking up, right? right? Well, yeah, a little. You know, I missed having you around here. That's right. You don't have anybody to go get your lunch for. Ah, you were more than a gopher. Right, yeah. You know, a confidant, advisor, a mediator between me and Marianne. Yeah. So, how about you? Went to see Vicky yesterday. You're kidding. No, we had a nice talk. Hi, don't tell me. Uh, you took a balloon ride over the wall into the <laughs> courtyard by moonlight? Gil, look, it's a minimum security prison. Now, anybody can go visit her at certain times. Anybody could, but only you would. Do you want to hear this or not? Yeah, go ahead. She said that she hopes that your company gets back on its feet again. Great. Kind words from the lady that ruined us from the beginning. You know, you really can't see beyond a pretty face, can you? I care for her. Yeah, would you care for her if she weighed 160 pounds and had a skin problem? <laughs> maybe not as much. Uh, maybe not at all. Hey, look, I'm not saying it's wrong to look for the good ones, but you could do better. Well, what happens to the good ones when I go for the better ones? Hey, I'm a lover, not a missionary. And I'm smart enough to know that you don't jump like some trained puppy when some sweet thing starts playing on your sympathy or bossing you around. You know what I mean? Mm. Come on, let's go to lunch. I only have an hour, so hurry up. Dave and Kate are back together? Sort of. But I thought the newspaper article said that Lee and Kate were engaged. How did it happen? Well, apparently, Lee proposed to Kate, but she said no for now. Oh, that's what Gene told me. Well, yeah, he... You called Gene after you read the article? Oh, no, no, just, just in passing. And he said he'd been misled. Oh. Well, yes, of course. I mean, he had been. You see, uh, Lee's campaign manager thought I'd make good copy, especially since Kate Phillips is such a political asset to Lee's campaign. But uh, she turned Lee down. Uh, yes, of course. And then the next day, she became very upset when she read the article saying that they were engaged. So now she's back with Dave. Well, it's tentative. 
Dave told me that Kate admitted there is the possibility of reconciliation, and as long as that possibility existed in her mind, she wouldn't see anybody else. Well, that's an answer to prayer. You know, I was a little bit worried about Dave. I mean, I wasn't quite sure how he was going to take that article. Well, it devastated him at first, but then it made him that much happier when he found out it was wrong. As a matter of fact, I think Kate's pretty wise to Lee now. Oh? Yeah, you remember the fundraiser? She's pretty sure that Lee did spike Dave's drink. And that plus manipulating the press at her expense. Well, I can see how it all came together. Listen, I'm gonna pull the car around. Okay, right. Uh, I'll be down in just a couple minutes. Okay. company. No one important. How are you, Peter? Fine. Just enjoying the show. So, Gil, what about lunch? Oh, wait a minute. We don't have a date. I couldn't call because... Look, if we stand here and debate for 15 minutes, we won't have time to eat. Yeah, okay. Uh, Peter, you want to go to lunch? You're hungry? Uh, we have some things to discuss. Amber, you can't come bursting in here and reorder my social life. Hey, a guys, simple uh, yes or no will do. I say yes with Peter. Peter's not hungry. How intimate. Uh, uh, Please, stay. I'll go. Um, I'll see you later. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by, sure. huh? I like the way you take control. Hi. I bring good news. Oh, hi, Dave. Come on in. Oh, I'm so excited. Somebody got here before me. Oh, ben told me everything, but that doesn't make it any less exciting. You know, it's nothing short of a miracle. When I read Jean's article, I thought the door was slamming in my face, but that's not what happened. Well, how are things going for you and Kate? Well, we're both taking it a little carefully, but underneath it all, it's this tremendous excitement. <laughs> I can't explain it. It's, it's, well, there's a hope there, a, a rightness. Hey, but I'll bet there's something that Ben didn't tell you. What's that? Last night when I was at Kate's apartment, Lee called. No, Ben didn't mention that. I guess I should feel sorry for him, but uh, I just couldn't. What did Kate tell him? Well, she made it clear that she didn't want to see him again. At all? Well, that was the impression I got. It was over and we were starting. Well, it, you know, it sounds so perfect. I can't <laughs> help but wonder how she had this change of heart. Well, th that's what's so wonderful about this. Uh, you know, there wasn't a change. She had these feelings deep inside her all this time. Oh, so it just took seeing you to bring them all back to the surface. Well, seeing that I'm not the man she divorced, I'm the man she married. I guess Lee's going to be pretty upset by all this. Yeah, I, you don't suppose he'll try anything, do you? Gee, I don't know. He's going to look pretty stupid when word gets out that uh, Kate's left him. Yeah, I don't suppose it'll help his image. No, it won't help his image, but his image will be closer to reality. <laughs> look at me. I think I'm gloating. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you mind if I use your phone? Oh, please. I've been trying to call Kate all day. Maybe we can have dinner tonight at the King's Arms. Well, what could be wrong at home? I thought I read in the newspaper that Lee and Kate are engaged. Yes, but the papers were wrong. It's not going to happen. Well, I don't understand. I thought you went and talked to your father. Yes, and mother and Lee. So the whole thing blew up in your face, huh? Lee proposed, but mother said she needed some time to think about it. And then Lee's campaign manager leaked the story about their engagement to the papers. So, that's it. So why are you so upset? Because I haven't told you why Mother put Lee off. Why? Because she thinks she can rebuild their relationship with Dave. Every nightmare I've ever had come true. Oh, come on, it's not that bad. Dave's not the worst person in the world to have a relationship with. I don't understand why you keep defending him. Look, I'm saying that he's interested in her because they have a lot in common. I mean, they were married for 20 years. Yes, half of those years she was miserable. And the only reason Dave is interested in her is because he's desperate to find someone who will believe he's sober. Well, maybe he is. Sometimes I think you and Stacy crawled out from under the same rock. Look, I'm just looking at the facts. Your mother is a very intelligent, self-sufficient woman. If Dave was trying to pull something over on her, 
I think she could see through it. Yes, but she's vulnerable. He's manipulating her. Don't you see that? Okay, have it your way. Dave is a, a mustache-twirling villain. And at this very moment, he's putting Kate across the tracks. The point is, Amber, you can't do anything about it. Wrong again, Gil. No, 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 don't get up. I'll answer it. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting you, buddy. Oh, hi, hi Ben. Um, yeah. Come on in. I'm not interrupting anything, I hope. No. No, I'm just fixing lunch. Do you want to join us? Uh, thanks, but I already ate. I was on my way back to the clinic, and I thought maybe I'd drop by and talk to Russ. Very surprised to see you here. Uh, you are welcome, though. Um, I think I'll go to the kitchen. Hey, don't let me chase you out of here. No, you're not. Don't worry. Have a seat. Thank you. So, so, <sighs> how's recovery going? Well, if you, uh, need a... A partner for tennis, I'll pass. <laughs> hardly, hardly. I've had a pretty tiring day myself. Yeah, how's that? Well, thanks to my hand, uh, Lester said there's not a place for me at the hospital right now. Listen, I'm sorry to hear that, really. You know, I, uh, I apologize to him. Yeah, I heard. That's very impressive. <laughs> well. <laughs> Maybe you should have put in a good word for me. Oh, I don't know that, that would have done any good or not. You gonna be all right, Russ? Hey, I'm no prophet. I don't know what's coming. God really wants you. <laughs> How do you know that? By everything you've been through. Saying it was just dumb luck isn't terribly convincing, I guess. Not at all. You should be thankful that the world's not in my hands. You and about a thousand others. Even I would have given up on me, but I guess... Oh, I guess he didn't. Because he loves you? Well, no, that's... That's the part that I have problems with. What other reason could there be? Oh, I don't know, maybe... Maybe he decided what's already going to happen to me, and everything that's already happened so far is all part of it. Russ, the grace of God is available to any living person. Yeah, I've heard that word before. What? Grace. Do you understand it? Yeah, it sounds a little like an out clause to me. You mean some sort of escape? Maybe. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe a fairy tale is a little more close to the truth. You know, there's a price for everything in this world. Everything. And when I hear people start talking about grace, I start imagining people who uh, don't want to hurt when they work out, who want success but don't want to work for it. Just take God's grace. Oh, come on, man. I know what I did was wrong, and I know I got to pay the price for it. Yeah, you're right. There is a price, and it does have to be paid, but now you've got a choice. What's that? You can try and pay it back yourself, or you can lay down your pride and accept the fact that you're not capable of paying it back. What, what do you say? God's just gonna wash it all clean. A nice clean slate. Oh, come on, Ben, that doesn't make any sense. What, is that your idea of grace? Yes. <laughs> yes. And it may not make sense, but it's true. Does it make sense that someone else would die in your place? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I've heard about that, too. Marianne talks about it. Jesus died for my sins, right? Well, let me tell you something. Jesus didn't kill Blue Nobles. Jesus didn't get involved in the mob. I did. It's my responsibility. Russ, as long as you keep claiming that sin, as long as you keep claiming that responsibility, then you're going to hold on to it, and it is going to be yours. You simply have to let go of it. Lay it down at the cross. Hey, because if you don't, if you don't, you're going to hang on to it, and you're never going to get rid of it. What are you saying? God doesn't give A's for effort? Not when it comes to earning forgiveness for your sins, he doesn't. That debt has already been paid. Just like that? No, not just like that. Since the beginning of time, God has demanded an atonement for sin. It used to be a lamb, a perfect lamb, a lamb without blemish. And Jesus became that lamb. And he paid the price for your sins and for mine with his own life. And every day you spend... Uh, paying it back yourself. In essence, you're saying to God, hey, yeah, thanks a lot, but I'd rather do it myself. Yeah, well, maybe. Maybe I am, because I just can't believe that. You know, I'm the one that decided what I did. It's my debt to pay, not his. That's fine. That's fine. You want the responsibility, you want the price, then you can have it. You know, it's kind of like when you were at the hospital. 
You thought you could do a better job administrating that hospital than anyone else. And maybe, just maybe, that's your problem. Russ always wants to do it, how's that song go? Did it my way? Well, that pride didn't get you anywhere at the hospital, and I can guarantee you, it won't get you anywhere with God. What do you mean I'm wrong again? How are you gonna keep your mother and Dave from getting back together again? I'm not about to sit here and give you my game plan. You'll just run off and uh, tell someone about it. I would not. I probably wouldn't agree. You haven't heard it. It's the principle of the thing, Amber. I mean, what would you do if your mother started meddling in your life? Like if she tried to break us up, for instance. Right now, I'd probably give her a standing ovation. Great joke. You'd hit the ceiling and you know it. I am not interfering. I'm protecting her. From who? From herself. Her own blind spots. We all have them, you know. Who protects you from yours? The only weakness I have at this moment is a certain young business type who should know a fraud when he sees one. I know a personal vendetta when I see one. I have first-hand knowledge. I don't care who your father is or how vulnerable your mother is or what you plan to do. All I do know is that if you interfere, everybody's gonna get hurt, even you. <laughs>